Skyrim, the home of the Nords, the Viking race of Nur, that literally invaded and overtook these lands on ships during the late mythic era, and their culture reflects that. A brazen, barbaric warriors who value honour over life itself. But their land hasn't received all the same treatment that their race implies. But what if all that could change? What if through the power of modding, we could completely transform Skyrim into the Norse Viking land that it could have been? And what if the gameplay reflected that? A barbaric land of ghastly, pillaging and drunken brutes. Well today, we're going to do just that. By transforming Skyrim into a Norse Valhalla Viking game that even Odin couldn't turn down. So let's begin, why don't we? Now as this episode of Game Change is Norse inspired, I find it rather fitting that this video has been made possible by NordVPN. The following is a safety protocol by Heavy Burns Incorporated. Listen, what do I say in every video? Come on, say it with me. Safety, safety first. first. Yes, exactly, safety first. And if you're like me, you spend about 90% of your day online. So you're gonna need some internet security. NordVPN protects your data while browsing the internet. No matter if you're at home or connected to a public data point like an airport or your local coffee shop, NordVPN will keep your internet habits secure and private, and lets you decide your location. So if you want to watch American Netflix, switch to America. And if you want to watch this Viking game change like a true Nord, then switch to Norway. It's as easy as that. NordVPN is offering you, get this, 68% off. Only $3.71 per month, plus you get an additional month free. And if that's not a great deal, I don't know what is. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash heavyburns or use code heavyburns at checkout to regain control of the internet again. Thanks once more to NordVPN for making videos like these possible. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. Now to sell many of the Norse theme changes and additions later in this episode, we're going to need to start by overhauling the visuals of Skyrim's Nordic world. In the base game, they do a pretty good job at portraying the cold climate that Skyrim is meant to offer. But we all know that we can't really do a game change without tweaking how the game looks, so we're going to elevate that by tweaking the graphics to suit the cold Scandinavian theme we're going for. And to achieve this, we're using none other than the Scandinavian Seasons EMB which paired with the Scandinavian Seasons weather mod is designed to bring a more realistic cold Nordic feel to your game, changing many of Skyrim's colours and tones to suit a more visually appealing but cold climate. With shaders allowing small effects for dynamic snow build-up during snowstorms or wet textures when it's raining, this EMB and weather mod makes up the first step in overhauling Skyrim's visuals to suit the Nordic theme. However, it's only the start of the list of mods I've added to Norsify Skyrim's visuals. After overhauling the flora with a more wild grass mod such as Northern Grass, the base of the world was beginning to look like the tone we're going for, but there still was a few other smaller mods needed to be added to finish off the entire look. And it started with none other than the faces of Skyrim, with Nordic Faces. This mod is a more friendly overhaul of all the face gen data in the game, it's designed to bring a more realistic and sometimes rugged look to the people of Skyrim, and overhauls them in a way which fits this theme rather well. Glorious Doors of Skyrim is a mod which simply overhauls the doors and gates of Skyrim. It gives them a more epic feel and definitely helps to sell the visuals of a more realistic historical world. Viking Ship Sails is a small retexture that just focuses on, well, retexturing ship sails in a more Viking theme. It's not a huge addition, but just adds enough to help sell our theme, especially when it comes to the Nordic ships docked around Windhelm. These mods aim to just add a bit more character and Norse theme to locations around the world using crests and sigils accustomed to the tone we're going for. And finally, Nordic Runestones is another small addition that just adds small runes found across the world designed in a Nordic fashion.
Now as far as audio is concerned, I'm not going to go too deep into it as we'll be using the Yggdrasil music and sound effects mod which we covered in the horror episode. Which if you haven't watched by now, you should. But yeah, pretty much it's the best mod for overhauling both the music of the game into a more Celtic Norse Viking theme, and also the UI sound effects for levelling up, receiving quests, acquiring perks, all that jazz. In this video, the world is the most important part in transforming Skyrim into the Viking land we want it to be. From overhauling vanilla towns, to adding some new ones of our own, this will really start to give the tone we're going for. The first mod is Viking Towns of Skyrim, a mod that adds two new settlements and one new additional tavern to your world, all designed to offer a Viking theme, more suited to Skyrim's climate. The first settlement, north of Winterhold, is the village of Ranghide, a small port containing four buildings with decking and bridges connecting them. The second is the market town of, uh, Iliad. Iliad? I don't know if that's, I think that's an I before that L, so it's Iliad. That. A slightly larger and more advanced settlement designed to offer a Viking themed trading post for travellers and residents alike. Finally is Bolivar, a small tavern outpost south of Morthal, sunken into the earth and offering a straw bed and a flask of mead for the weary traveller. Each one of these settlements are expertly constructed and are all placed in areas that were otherwise lacking in the base game. Alongside Lingui, which is another settlement mod adding a more built up and traditional Nordic town north of Dawnstar situated upon an ice mount far into the Sea of Ghosts, these extra settlements will add some more flavour to your Viking world, and especially, if nothing else, add some variety and content to the north of Skyrim which otherwise was left pretty lacking in the base game. Now moving on to our existing settlements. As much as Skyrim cities are nice and all, Many of them kind of feel a bit samey. The same exterior buildings, many of the same interior layouts, not much variety except maybe the areas they're located in. Well, there's a series of mods that I've been keeping an eye on, and I've also covered one in the past, that aim to make each of the Northern Holds, aka Dawnstar, Winterhold and Morthal, more Viking in theme and fresh in variants. Cities of the North is three standalone mods that completely reskin and in many ways redesign the three minor cities of the Northern Realm of Skyrim. Dawnstar has been rebuilt into a larger, more grand city that looks like it was constructed out of the very trees located around the Pale. Its roofs are large and spiked, and their design is just about as Norse as you would expect. Winterhold has been repurposed to reflect both the feel of the lore and also the tone of a true Viking town with larger, grander buildings, some seemingly crafted from the very oak gathered from longships, and a fortified castle looking down upon the city from the cliffside above. Morthal, in my opinion, the most unique of the three, has been completely reskinned to offer the freshest new feel to an otherwise rather bland town. The Jarl's longhouse now looking like a thatched hall towering above the rest of the buildings surrounding it, with smaller Viking buildings making up the rest of the town, with interiors to match, even for a non-Norse playthrough, these redesigns are some of the most unique and well-crafted changes to the more often overlooked cities of Skyrim, and I'll personally be keeping these in my load order for the foreseeable future. Cities of the North brings the towns we know and love up to par with the ones added within the Viking towns of Skyrim, and starts to offer the changes needed to overhaul the world the way that we want it for this build. And finally, to complete our world, we're going to need a place for our Viking character to stay. The first is the Viking Longhouse, a medium-sized hall just outside of Windhelm. It's simple in design, but works well for this kind of playthrough. It offers the essentials you'll need to survive, but more importantly, brings you this great long hall and dining area, fit for any Nordic feasts for you and your clan. If you're looking to stick to Windhelm as your main anchor point, then this Viking Longhouse is your best bet. However, if you're looking to be more out there in the thick of it, situating yourself closer to many of the new settlements we added earlier, then we also have Skjagafell, a more grand and largish Viking home built upon the top of a mound out on the shores of the Sea of Ghosts. It has no load screens, meaning it's fully integrated into the world, and offers a great, unique hall fit for the Norse gods themselves. 
I'm not sure what it is about this one in particular, but these types of player homes are ones that I love. Something out the way in an unusual location that has its own twist. It comes fit with everything you need from a living area to upstairs a bedroom, and the collector's edition comes with as many stands as you would need to store all your items that you find across the world. Now before we get into the final and my personal favourite mod of the video, we're going to cover some weapons and armour, because that's a staple of a viking world. In this segment we're going to cover some replacers to change the look of existing sets for most NPCs you'll come across, and also some new sets for the player and your fellow companions. First we have Nordwar UA's Vanilla Armour Replacer, which replaces many of the common armors you'll come across in your game, with new, more realistic options that are a little less fantasy, but fit perfectly into this list, as it really gives some of the new and existing settlements a boost of Viking, or just genuinely medieval immersion due to the NPCs that inhabit these areas, fitting the theme that the locations also aim to replicate. This mod replaces everything from iron, leather, and steel, along with their weapon counterparts, and even adds its own variants of these armours littered throughout the world, making them all appear somewhat more realistic, or at least offers a nice alternative to those more fantasy-inspired armours such as Dwemer, which is now a little more rugged around the edges. But for some more specific sets for yourself, you'll want to take a look at mods such as the Duskward Light Armour mod. This set is actually included in a pack containing a total of three new armour sets, including the Apotheosis Light Armour and the Blooded Heavy Armour, Although the Duskward set is really the only one that fits correctly into this list, so that's the one we're focusing on. Any of these armour mods paired with the auto unequipped shield to back mod gives you plenty of options to mix and match the ultimate viking set. But what good is some new Norse armour when the weapons remain the same? Well starting with a very self explanatory mod named Viking Weaponry SE, we can start to fix that. This mod is designed to provide weapons modelled after those you might see in the TV show Vikings, and in doing so brings you a total of 8 new items coming in 2K and 4K resolutions. These include the Lothbrook Axe, Lagatha's Sword, Floki's Axe, Floki's Adds, the Lothbrook Shield, and finally Lagatha's Shield. Each of these can be crafted under the Steel skill tree, and offer some good base weaponry for your playthrough. Next, to expand your arsenal further, we have the somewhat historically accurate weapons and viking gear mod, which as the name entails, brings a bunch more medieval and historically accurate weapons to your game. There are many, many new weapons and shields included in this, so I'm not going to go over each and every one of them, but some examples would be the Zweihander, the viking axes, various viking shields, and many more swords to go alongside them. This mod is great for offering a fantastic selection of more traditional viking weapons to your game, that you can mix and match and find across your world. And if you still don't have enough weapons, then you can also throw on Garrus's axes, which adds an additional 43 new axes to your game, in just about every variation you can imagine. And the final weapon mod you'll want to add is actually a standalone mod a single weapon that while you use various lower tier axes you acquire at the start of your playthrough, you aim to one day acquire the ultimate Norse god axe, and that's the Leviathan axe. This mod is incredibly detailed for a weapon mod, and that's honestly the main selling point of what makes it so special. This mod will take you on a journey to acquire the ultimate god killing weapon by travelling to new realms, crafting and customising a variety of different pommels, which will in turn upgrade the axe through four different tiers. There's so much variation and content to discover here that I'd recommend you try it for yourself to get the full experience. Or go watch Gim's video where he goes over most of the mod in detail so you can get a better picture of the complexities of this mod before you install it yourself. Now the final mod of the video is one I've covered in the past, and I try not to recover mods I have before, but I couldn't really resist adding it in this video as it's one of my fondest memories playing a mod for the first time. So we're giving it a second shout out, and that's none other than the mod Maelstrom. Maelstrom is a mod which begins your journey as any good adventure does, a rumour from an innkeep of a strange call for aid in the Sea of Ghosts. He'll tell you of a group of mercenaries that were seeking to find something, and needed all the help they could get in carrying out their search. And so you, 
take it upon yourself to follow in their footsteps. On the shores of the sea, you'll find a small camp, occupied by only one soul, the last of the group to leave on the ships to an ancient island that has mysteriously arisen in the sea. And so you will follow them right there yourself to uncover the mysteries of this mythic anomaly. When you arrive, you'll see the expedition has already gone on ahead, deep into the depths of a ruin that sunken tunnels go on for miles under the sea of ghosts. And now it's your turn to find out what happened to them and what they were trying to uncover. From the tunnels below, you'll hear a faint voice calling from a distant world. It will guide you through these halls in the footsteps of those who came before you, finding many of the previous expedition team along the way and uncovering the mysteries of their madness. You'll come across trials and choices that can play a part in the ending of this quest. Throughout your journey submerged thousands of miles under the sea, you'll start to uncover what's really going on here. An ancient spirit has awoken, a spirit of a god that has long been forgotten, and you'll earn the origin of her myth and what drove her followers to insanity. Maelstrom is by far the most immersed I've ever been into a mod since the first time I played the Forgotten City. I'm not really sure what it is about it that makes it so engaging, but the atmosphere and mystery keeps you locked in every step of the way, and it has some of the most unique voice acting and storytelling I've seen in any quest mod to date. This mod is listed as a follower mod, and don't get me wrong, it is, but it's so much more. And still to this day, it makes me excited to see the creativity of the modding community. There's a reason I'm covering it as the main mod of the video for the second time, and if you still haven't played it after this, then there's not much more I can do. This video has been really fun to make. It's an area that ever since my ocean game change, I've always had an itch to create. And there's no doubt that if you paired both of these videos together, they would complement one another and really bring a new life to the northern realm of Skyrim and its surrounding seas. And as we begin to close out this episode of Game Change, I want to actually thank you for all the support on the recent videos on the channel. It's been really fun finding the passion to bring you guys some more interesting and unique videos again. And ever since I've been focusing solely on that, I've seen an outpouring of support, not just in my own comment section, but all over the internet. Even randomly coming across a really nice post on Reddit that I was kind of a little taken back by, to be honest. And as we move closer and closer to 2021, we are gearing up for the comeback of Skyrim in a big way. Not that it really ever went anywhere, but with all the projects in the work, and all the new creators coming up on YouTube and Twitch, I'm ready to take the leap in bringing back the hype to the series we all know and love, and giving Bethesda a break for a bit and remembering the reality of the situation. We're all here because we love Skyrim and love The Elder Scrolls, and as we gear up for The Elder Scrolls 6, I want to stay optimistic and give them a chance. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe so we can hit 100k by the end of next year.